Hey guys, thanks for tuning into this episode of Colorado Air Gunner. I'm Jim Fisher, and uh, I just got done with my mule deer hunt. I'm all packed up, done, cleaned up, feeling uh, civilized again. It was an awesome. It was an awesome trip. I've been chasing uh, mule deer for several seasons with an air gun in a couple different states, and haven't been able to get it done. I've, you know, it's really just about getting outdoors and, and having a tag in your pocket and having your rifle and getting out there and enjoying nature and having a lot of close calls with animals and seeing animals in nature i saw a bunch of elk so i hunted for five days um wasn't seeing many deer i saw i'm sitting there and i'm, I'm just kind of chilling so I, I i had about 200 yards to the end of the clearing and i'd kind of expected them to come in on this game trail I couldn't really get closer because the wind, I just really wanted the wind to be right. Here it comes. I mean, I see this guy coming through the trees and, and he turns and he's kind of heading right at me. And I didn't even bother like counting points or anything because he, he was wide. I mean, he was wide and I'm like, okay, this thing's a shooter. So I get the first camera on, I get my range finder out. And I go to range this guy. It tells me dead battery. Well, I had just had it tell me dead battery the night before. I put a fresh battery in it. Hit it again. Dead battery. Now, I had ranged everything, but the perspective was a little off. It was low light. And so I have to just put the range finder down. I get on the gun and realize I got to turn the other camera on. I reach over. I turn the other camera on. And... As I'm coming back from turning the camera on, he's, you know, he saw me. He, the, the gig was up. He saw me reaching over. He had, had his eyes on me. Now, 50-50 whether he's okay with it and it was just a, enough movement that it, he's going to keep coming and it's 50-50, he's going to turn and walk away or take off or start stomping and snorting or something. So, I mean, I get on, this all ha happens in a matter of, you know, you'll see in the, in the video happens fast. So I get on the gun. I'm kind of looking at the trees behind him, which I know are a couple hundred yards. And then I'm looking up and I'm thinking, okay, he's at 160, 170, maybe something like that. So I, I kind of give myself the hold over for that long of a shot. I'm on him. And a couple of things I didn't like about it. He's steeply quartered to me which I don't really like and, and then the other thing is well, I've learned this lesson the hard way a couple times I don't like shooting anything I can't range first and know exactly what my distance is but I I got a little bit of buck fever and this thing is staring me down I know I can make the shot if I get the yardage right and uh, I end up making the decision on the fly in a split second that He's not going to keep coming. He's focused on me. He's going to turn and walk away. Or he's going to go back into the trees. He was right on the edge of the trees. And uh, I line him up for that quartering two shoulder shot and squeeze the trigger. Bam! Hit him hard. Knocked him down. He tumbled down into the bushes. And he started to get back up. And when he started to get back up, I knew what had happened. I had missed him high. Caught him in the spine somewhere. He had nothing from the middle of his back down. He stood up and uh, he gave me a shot. I knew what had happened. I kind of adjusted, shot, lo shot lower, or used less holdover, put one double lung right through him as he's, as he's standing up and he falls back into the trees and, and that was it. Or into some little bit of shrub right there and that was it. So, not the best shot I've ever made. And... I kind of broke a couple of my own rules. I, I took a shot without the range finder and I took a shot on a quartered animal, but I felt confident. I had this gun sighted in, it's dialed, it's super accurate. And sometimes you just gotta go with your gut. And uh, you know, my gut said, take the shot. I took the shot and you know, it was a little high. I missed him a few inches high. I was kind of going for that high frontal shoulder, but uh, Hit him a little high, luckily just completely severed his spine. And uh, he was going nowhere at that point. It was easy finishing shot. But, uh, you know, not the best shot I've ever made, but sometimes, you know, you, you 
like, like having a little bit of luck on your side and you, you get your animal down and, and finish them off quick. Anyways, got out there, had an awesome time hunting, got it done. The, the footage of the kill is horrible. When I got the camera on, I was going to zoom it in, but he had already, just in that time between when I saw him and when I got the camera on, he had closed a lot of ground and he had seen me and I just didn't have time to sit there and zoom in on the camera. I, I, that's one of the reasons I kind of wanted to be further back was I wanted to have time to do this. I've been trying to get a big game hunt on film for a couple of years now since I started, since I decided I was going to do a channel and I've missed an elk for trying to get it on film, at least one, maybe two, because I, I'm kind of just like, I don't even want to take the shot if I'm not going to get it on film. So in trying, film, it shows you how old I am. I'm trying to get it on video. Um, and I just, I, I just didn't even want to take it, the shot without, it's fine to get the animal, but I've shot a lot of big game animals and I really wanted to document it on video. So I've missed a couple of elk. I've missed a couple of bear because I'm trying to get it on video. Let me just tell you, it's harder than it looks. Some of these guys make it look so easy to go out and get an incredible kill shot, crystal clear, zoomed in. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it for you one of these days. But being a one man hunting, one, being a one man hunter slash film crew is pretty hard. It's, it's more work, you're carrying a bunch of crap around, and it's hard enough to just get a good solid shot on an animal, much less try to have at least one, if not two cameras rolling catch, capturing it. So I apologize for the, the video footage on that. It happened all so fast. I wasn't able to get it zoomed in, so if I try to zoom it in, it's grainy, but you know, I appreciate you watching and uh, you know, it is what it is. I still wanted to make the video and document it. It, it was quite a, an accomplishment for me to get in a mule deer with an air gun. Like I said, I've been trying to do it for a while and haven't been able to. And this completes my, I just call it the Western slam. So now I've taken an elk, an antelope and a mule deer with, uh, with an air gun, which is something I, I had wanted to do for a long time. I had done it with center fires, but I really wanted to do it with an air gun. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy about it, the way it worked out. And he's down and I got a bunch of meat in my freezer. I got a video out of it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it's not, uh, it's not too bad, but bear with me. I'm slowly, I'm trying to build equipment and I'm, I'm really working on the next couple of hunts that I go on, bringing somebody with me to run the camera because doing it by yourself is really hard, but I'm going to keep working at it. I'm going to start. All right. Oh, day two, sun's coming up. Get out here and get up this mountain, see if we can uh, do some glassing, get eyes on any, any bucks or any deer at all, really. Didn't see anything day one. So uh, hopefully day two brings a little better luck. And I came back up today. All I've seen is a couple does, but there's a little creek crossing. This is just a, see if I can show you some of the sign. Track right there. Very fresh deer track, very fresh deer track, very fresh deer track, elk track coming the other direction, right here, there it is, he slid so much, he dug his dew claws in, another track, another fresh track, the sign in here is just so thick. You can't take five steps without stepping on a pile of elk crap or deer crap or coming across fresh tracks.
beautiful morning out here. Just had a couple does come across in front of me. A little bit of snow falling. Cool temps, still breeze. Feels good. It's beautiful out here. some of the sign I've been seeing up here there's a lot there's just big big game trails fresh tracks really fresh came through here probably last night maybe even this morning but there's just a couple I don't know if you can see them but there's a couple big game trails coming through here and these lead right down to that meadow uh, this is my last evening besides that little four corn I haven't seen any any bucks whatsoever but I was up in here before a lot of good sign a lot of a lot of scat big game trails um, you know seasons come and they go and and uh, you just got to be happy that you're getting out here you got your gun you got a tag in your pocket and uh that means you always got a chance so let's get up in there i must sit up this evening on a, a cut that's back up in here and i haven't been able to catch them out on the other side of this valley i know they're coming out there i've seen a ton of sign but i think they're coming out after dark so i'm gonna try to get up in here about a mile mile and a half uh closer to where i think they're bedding down and try to catch them right before dark so, uh, we'll see what happens.
just got it done. The last evening of the last day of the last season of the year. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my God. The Texan getting it done, man. <sighs> yes. Yes. Oh my God. I'm so bummed. I mean, that all just happened so fast. Holy cow. He can't. Oh, I'm lightheaded. Oh, I'm getting tunnel vision. Oh my God. Mule deer down with the Texan air gun. You saw it here. Oh my God. Oh, it's gonna be dark soon. Oh, you know what it happens now. The fun's over and the work starts. Let's go down there and check this bad boy out. Holy cow. Oh my God. Oh man. I tried to range him. My range finder is saying dead battery. I just put a brand new battery. It told me that last night when I was arranging some stuff here. It said dead battery. I had to take a shot without the range finder. I hate doing that, but I, I had ranged some things earlier and he was quartering to me, but man, we dropped him, dropped him. Oh my God. Oh guys, I'm so jacked up right now. Let's get down there. Here he is guys. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six by four mule deer, two shots. First one dropped him, sucked him one, finished him off. And here he is. Oh man. Oh, I'm going back up the mountain. Oh, I shot this buck. Oh, and then I couldn't get any video footage because it got dark. So I cut his head off. Hiked him about a mile back to the truck. Going back in for load number two. I didn't have my game bags with me. Didn't have my good knife with me. So, going back in to finish him off. Going back up this freaking hill. Oh, for the second, well, for the third time tonight. And probably got at least two, three more trips in me, but hey man. Big buck down with an air gun. You gotta be pumped about that, dog. Yeah, I had to come all the way to Idaho to get it done, but <sighs> back up the mountain. All right, finally got this thing quartered out. There's one of the rear quarters, and there's two front quarters in the Badlands. Uh, back straps, tenderloins are in there, two front quarters. There's the back quarter, the head and one quarter is already done at the truck, but I'm not making another trip. This is gonna be one hell of a trip out of here with almost a whole mule deer, minus one quarter. But uh, man, I'm so beat, holy cow. There's an advantage to hunting with other people. Whew, there is, and this is it. Getting it out of here, but here I am. I'm probably only about a mile back. It feels late. I feel old and I feel tired. But we got it done! Yeah! So, uh, you know, as bad as these hikes are, it ain't so bad. <laughs> Ooh. I just coughed up a lung right there. But uh, here we go, last trip out. Get to the truck, heading home in the morning. Using uh, VIP ammo, I was using a 390 grain boat tail hollow point from Justin at VIP ammo. Solid bullet, uh, but a shout out to Justin for making such awesome ammo. I'm gonna use a lot of his stuff on future hunts. Check out his big mouth, he's got some awesome 510 stuff. Bullet performed great. When I needed that second follow-up shot, what I, what I always used to do was just when I'd get set up somewhere, I'd take another bullet or two out. I'd have one in the chamber, obviously, and then I'd just set another one right next to me in case I needed a quick follow-up shot. 
but I was able to just flip that thing up, slide that little thing forward on the two bullet ammo holder, pop one of those out. I think I had this gun reloaded and I don't know half the time at five or six seconds uh, for that follow-up shot. So that's another awesome little upgrade for the Texan is that bullet holder. You gotta get you one of those. Anyways, thanks a lot for, for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you guys got something out of it, got some entertainment out of it. And uh, hopefully we'll be bringing some more successful big game hunts to you in the near future. So I'm Jim Fisher. You're watching the Colorado Air Gunner. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.